All right, guys, welcome back to the Golf Podcast. So, Mike, you and I recently had to, a very interesting experience. We got to take the Combine that's featured in the new... That was a lot of fun. Rapsoda Mall yeah. Launch Monitor. It was a lot of fun. Uh, and, and again, I've, I've talked about this for years on the show. The more, you know, as we progress year over year, it just seems like the technology that was only accessible to the best players in the world, top tour players is starting to become more and more realistically accessible to everyday players. Oh, yeah. And mm -hmm. I've always said this, like I'm the type of person that I feel like I learn the game by watching what the best players do and trying to emulate that. Right. Right. So previously you had things like a combine that was on Trackman, mm -hmm. right? But you know, Trackman it's, it's a $30,000 machine. Um, you may more and more, we're starting to see that there are available for use. Like if you rent a simulator bay somewhere, mm -hmm. but, the fact of you having like widely accessible like trackmen, unless you're a tour player, yeah, or like twenty thousand, got up thirty thousand dollars in your pocket, it. it's right. not happening. But the combine, I always thought was a really cool way to kind of assess how you're playing and benchmark and things like that. Well, enter a company like Rapsodo, right, which we've been using for years now, mm -hmm. right, and we've had the mobile launch monitor for a couple of years. Uh, recently, and we'll, we'll, we're going to bring Justin on the show uh, in a few minutes, Justin from Rapsodo, because we wanted to have him speak a little bit about this and tell us the inner workings of how it works. But they had some really big news. They rolled out a combine of their own. So now you've got the Rapsodo, which, by the way, we'll, we'll put um, in the video description and in the show notes, we'll put our code, it's Golf is the MLM. You yep. get 100 bucks off this thing. Yep. It brings it down to a price 400 of 400 bucks. Yeah, $400. Right. So now you're talking about having that top what only top professionals had and it's accessible for everyday players. So what does this matter to you who's listening, right? Well, I think the big takeaway is if you're truly someone who said, you know, I'm getting very frustrated that I practice and I don't feel like I'm getting any better or my game on the range or how I play on the range doesn't translate to the golf course. Mm -hmm. You may need to take a little bit of out of the playbook of the best golfers right, and the sure. way that they structure their practice. And mm -hmm. that's what we're going to talk to Justin about, who, by the way, is an incredible golfer himself. Yeah. I mean, we're talking Justin has played with PGA Tour players in his journey. He played on the Corn Ferry Tour. We'll let him tell you his background. But any time that a player of his caliber is speaking about how they approach the game, I'm all ears. Yeah, and, and I, like I've said this to you many times, is I can't do a range session without numbers anymore. I'm just spoiled now. Right. Get this thing in your hand and you see how powerful it is, you're like, whoa. So just beating a bucket of balls just doesn't really work. Right, so yeah. we're gonna we're gonna dive into like what the combine is, how the combine can help you. And, and we, not that long ago, we had the guys from Game Like Training on the pod. Mm -hmm. And they talked about how they saw very real improvement from their students when they added this gamification. I remember like some of the funny videos they had where they'd have, they would be simulating pressure by having students hit different shots and then sprint over to their putt and they get their heart racing yeah. a little bit like you would over a, a putt that mattered yep. and putting. So we're simulating what's on the golf course, the pressure, mm -hmm. but it's also, like I said, it's a, it's a game because what happens is if you've got a structured practice and it gives you a number, like a quantifiable number, the natural thing that any person who's competitive is going to do is they're going to want to beat it. Right. Exactly. So right. like now mm -hmm. with the combine, we're creating a number. You and I both took the combine. If you guys didn't see that video, we'll link to that as well so you can check it out. But we both generated a number and our initial both thought was like, ooh, now I want to beat yeah, it. Yeah. Like I could beat that. Right. Right. And that it's that pursuit of beating your own personal best is what makes us better golfers. Right. Bingo. So super excited for this one. Um, let's go ahead now. Let's let's bring Justin on the show. We're going to talk about what this Rapsodo Combine is, what went into developing it, and we're going to talk a little bit about how you can use it. Because, I mean, that's the most important thing. At the end of the day, it can be fun, it can be flashy, it can be cool, but golfers are wondering, is it going to make me better? Right. So like, let's dive into that now and see how this is going to make you better. All right, so we're excited. We're going to have a fun conversation. We've got Justin Bryant from Rapsodo, a product that we've used quite often, Frank. We and have, yeah. I'm excited about all the new features, but we're not just going to talk about that. We're going to kick things off talking about you know, mobile launch monitors in general. But first off, Justin, welcome to the show. Yeah, guys. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to uh, talk about golf. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, well, you know, know, we've we've had fun with Rapsodo. We've learned a lot using the product. And, and anytime we've kind of 
use the mobile launch monitor, we've always shocked of how much we get out of it and, and, and you know, the focus practice. And we're going to talk all about that. But I want to start, let's talk about you. Tell us about you and how you got started in this field. I know you're a great golfer. You know, you had a great past with golf. And let, let, let's talk about you first. Yeah, so I've been playing golf as long as I could remember. Um, my dad loved the game, you know, won the club championship. And uh, I'm from St. Louis, Missouri. So um, I would always tag along with him, uh, play with him. It was kind of our bonding, uh, you know, thing to do together. So uh, I got hooked early on, uh, played collegiately at Wake Forest University. Uh, it was a ton of fun. Um, at a I had a great team there. Um, Webb Simpson was a teammate uh, my freshman year. Um, and I was kind of between him and, you know, the Wills L. Taurus, Cameron Young. They're they're a little bit younger than me, but I was kind of there when they were getting recruited and, and got to play with them some. Um, so I graduated in 2012, uh, and I chased it. I wanted to play the PGA Tour uh, and uh, didn't work out, but played – some corn fairy tour events, Canadian tour events, uh, anything you could play. I feel like I played. Um, and then 2019 hit and uh, missed getting my card by a few shots for the corn fairy. And at that time I was married, had two kids, you know, you're on the road traveling for 30 weeks uh, a year. Mm -hmm. um, so I was kind of trying to figure out, you know, do I keep playing what's next? Uh, and then COVID hit and it just paused professional golf for a while and so i thought you know it's a time to to find something else um and uh state was living in st louis still at that time and just talking with people and and met our chew at rep soto and and got plugged in and it's a perfect uh match for me because i'm you know i grew up uh, trying to improve and, and rap soto is all about player development and giving that accessibility. So that's kind of my, my short journey. Yeah. And we, we definitely want to, I want to dive into this question and this idea of like mobile launch monitors. I mean, they're, they're, it's really cool how it's much more accessible that they've become for your everyday golfers. I mean, we, we talk about it every time we talk about Repsoto. I still can't believe what you can get for the price that you can get it for. I mean, I remember the days when you didn't sniff any launch monitors for under $20,000, which was incredible. But for, you know, for me, we think of like a launch monitor is really cool. We bring it to the range, get to see how far you hit it and things like that. But I think it's new for us to really even think about it as an improvement tool. I always think of it as measuring where you're at right now. It tells me how far I hit the ball. It tells me, you know, things like that. But from an improvement standpoint, like what, what was the motivation for Rapsodo for some of the new features you're rolling out in that vein, as you were saying, helping golfers improve? How do you take this device and say, this is not just a measurement tool. This is an improvement tool. Yeah, great question. So I, th I think that's what may come combines the feature so great because one it's just a fun way to practice right you know it's that kind of i know what i'm doing when i when i go to the range because i think a lot of times people go out there and you know they're trying to get better but how do i get better and, and you know i can't take my, my uh, game from like a range to the court so this is a great way to uh, give you kind of a set practice you know to a church to approach targets in the driver and then puts a little pressure on it because you know you're going to get, get graded on it at the end so um it, it's it's that right there just gamifying your practice and but also kind of giving you you know the benchmarking of where you can improve kind of uh putting you against your handicap level which is a great way because someone might be you know a, a nine handicap but when they do the uh, combines and from 80 yards they might be a 15 handicap uh so you you really see that those differences or driver wedges kind of whatever yardages they pick um but really giving them to the context of what's a good shot because a lot of times i think people you know they see the pro shots on tv and the best shots and that's kind of their expectation sometimes but when you get this combine report we're giving you the averages for your handicap level and for the PGA Tour to kind of give you the idea of what's, you know, achievable and kind of where you stand. So I think that's just key in, in giving people to like context on what's a good shot. 
Makes sense. And I think you're the per- perfect person to speak to this because of your background with, you know, things like the corn fairy and stuff like that and playing at the level that you've played at. Do you find that there's a disconnect between the way a lot of like very serious top tier golfers practice and work on their game and then kind of your everyday weekend golfers who legitimately want to get better? But is there a disconnect in the way that they approach their practice? Oh, totally. So I always think there's two ways to practice. There's two buckets. There's the mechanical side where you're looking at your swing, thinking about swing positions. Um, and that's that's huge. It's important. You need your fundamentals. But where you really get to the next level is implementing those swing changes into more performance-based practice, which is where these combines come in. So mm-hmm. really trying to hit the shot 70 yards, not worrying about where it is, you know, your club position is, because you've already put in that work. And so that's what t- takes you from a good player to a great player from a 10 handicap to a single digit or single digit to scratch is really that performance based practice. And and that's how you get better. Um, a lot of guys, when we were trying to get better, I mean, look, look on the tour, this just past week from the tour championship, there's all different kinds of swings and you need to find the blueprint that works for you mechanically, but they're all different. Right. But a lot of those guys, um, know, how to hit it 70 yards, how to hit it 128 yards. And that's where something like Rep Soto, the combines comes in because you are practicing specifically that and getting feedback on how you're doing. Yeah. And I, I like to, this is something you and I were commenting on while, the whole time we were taking the combine, how much variability it kind of forced us into that practice session. Cause admittedly totally guilty of being the type of guy who will go there with just my seven iron and, and you hit like the same shot over and over. And at that point, like, what are you really doing? What we liked with the combine, it was, it was hands off. First of all, I didn't have to keep interacting with the device. It just would, you know, I would hit two shots with one club, two shots with the next club, and then two shots with driver and just kind of go through it. That to me feels like, and correct me if I'm wrong, like a little bit closer to what, you know, top tier golfers are doing when they're on the range. They're mixing it, mixing it up. They're not just, as we say, beating balls. Right. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I mean, we even see that in our data on the back end, uh, what clubs people are hitting. It's unbelievable how many seven irons are hit. (laughs) And it's, you know, I think people, that's the favorite club, right? Like the seven iron from 10 cup, you can't break this one, but it's, there's a time and place to, to work on your, your swing and your seven iron, but getting to the next level, it's, it's that variability where you said like how many times during a round of golf do you have a perfect stock seven iron? It's pretty rare. So it's, you know, if for me, my seven iron carries 176, but there's times where I'm going to have to hit a 170, maybe the pins back and it's 180. And so is it a chip six or a try to, I hit a, you know, flat a seven iron down a little bit. So it releases back there. That's, you know, controlling your ball and hitting those different shots with different clubs is what's going to make you a better player. Hey, Justin. So for, for someone like me, a 10 handicap, I take the combine, by the way, very addicting. The minute we were done, we wanted to take it again, mm-hmm. you know, and I could see that happening, but you know, you shoot a score and you see, let's say it's like a 50 out of 100. You're disappointed with yourself. You get this beautiful combine report. What should that golfer, what should I do next? Do you go to a coach? Do you try it again? Do you identify what you need to work on and just go work on that? Like, what's what's the next play? Yeah. So what I would do is first pick two distances that you're uncomfortable with or that you think you're really good at. Don't pick a distance you're not sure at because when you're doing the combine, you can actually get the feedback. So if you're like, man, I don't feel like I'm good from 80 yards and 130, um, plug those numbers in and, and see actually how you performed. And while it's waiting to get that, generate the report, kind of think about how you did. Like, you know, what's your okay. expected result based on how you performed? And that's that's the first benchmark, okay? And then I would look at the dispersion pattern, especially for wedges. If it's something that um, you're missing them right to left uh, and it's a really wide dispersion, um, that's something you should probably check with your coach at because your starting position is not good or your ball is curving a lot. Um, and that's probably more of a mechanical thing you need to work out. But if your dispersion is long, 
that means your contact's probably pretty good. Uh, but you just really need to hone in on what that distance, you know, feels like, whether it's the clock system or gripping down on it or changing your speed. Um, that's where you as the player need to really own that because, you know, I've heard, I think Nick Faldo does kind of the, the clock system, but I watched a video with Tiger and he just feels it in his hands. So I wouldn't say there's a right way to do it. You kind of have to experiment out there um, using uh, the Rapsodo and kind of figure out what's best for you. But anytime you have a wide dispersion, that, that means you're something with your swings not not going on so that's when i would look to a coach um now granted the longer your, your club's gonna get you know your dispersion should be wider with the driver than it is a sand wedge but um ideally that's kind of where i, I point, point folks and is the report going to be that simple i mean we've done it we've taken it but for our audience explain what kind of insights do, are they going to get in that report is it going to say stuff yeah, like so I, you need your target your offline all that stuff so after you're uh, done with the report, you're going to see an overall score, um, which is, um, you know, whether it's 70, 50, 80, 30, um, you're going to see a score, which is kind of the, the game part of it with that handicap. Then you can break it down even further with a score um, for the first approach target, the second one, and then the driver. And so that's where you can really identify your weakness. Um, we it. have one guy in the office who I love who's probably a 20 handicap but his driver uh every time he takes it like a five handicap and his anytime he takes it with the irons he's, he's 25 30 so it's very clear right there that there he go. needs to work on his and his irons um and again you know kind of figuring out um by looking at the dispersion again if it's long okay you're hitting it well but we need to really figure out the distances with your clubs and if it's a wide that's when i would you know find your local a pga pro and, and kind of figure out what's going on with your swing all right guys we'll get you right back to our interview just in a second but first we want to thank this week's sponsor first starting off with titleist and guys we all have different ability levels and goals but the one thing we share is a desire to bring our best every single time we tee it up and it all starts with choosing the right golf ball f that you can trust we've learned this we've been through countless fittings and just getting out there for me it's the pro v1 playing it knowing that i can rely on it to perform the way i want to perform is a true game changer and that pro v1 it's the best combination of speed spin and feel in the game and the pro v1 x gives you that higher flight and a firmer feel but both deliver that long distance that consistent flight we're after as well as a soft feel and most importantly that drop and stop green side control guys you know when you hit a green you want to hold that green. Mm -hmm. We know the frustration of when you don't. So it's so important to have that golf ball you can rely on. So whether you're Justin Thomas, Jordan Spieth, or Nelly Korda competing at the game's highest level, or simply striving to be the best you can be, uh, tee up that Pro V1 or Pro V1X and always bring your best. Find out more at Titleist.com. All right, guys, looking to add a little more thrill to this year's college football season. Bring on the bets. That's right, DraftKings, America's number one sportsbook, has a killer deal for college football this week. Bet $5 on any game, and guess what? You're going to get $200 in free bets instantly. So DraftKings, it's great. It's been around a long time, the sportsbook. It's safe, secure. You can withdraw money anywhere, anytime. And I love the same game parlays. It's a way to make multiple bets in the same game to win more money. All right, you know I'm going to put a little bit of money on my Florida Gators this week. So guys, make sure you download the DraftKings Sportsbook app. Use Promo code GOLFICITY when you sign up. And remember, you place a $5 wager, you're going to get $200 in free bets. It's a no-brainer. College football season, it's on. All right, and huge thanks to Tommy John, guys. If you haven't checked out their, their latest 360 Sport underwear, you definitely want to give it a look. It is the peak of comfort, whether you're out there on the golf course, sitting on your couch, wherever you're doing, uh, it is truly a game changer and we saw it we said like when you're out on the golf course you got to feel good you got to be comfortable yeah. uh we recently did actually some really fun content with them <laughs> out on the course including one of us getting a little bit wet yes uh so stay Someone tuned for that uh that one's a lot of fun but listen whether you're in or out of the gym the golf course sleeping anything that 360 stretch fabric prevents riding up wedgies um during your most strenuous activities again last thing you need when you're out there trying to to go low is feeling yeah, uncomfortable. They're super comfortable. They've got these mesh cooling zones, anti-odor, antimicrobial technology, and most importantly, that stay put waistband. Like I said, once you've gone over to Tommy John, 
is just no going back. I'm here. He digs. Yeah, he yeah. knows it. Uh, we're super comfortable when we're out there. So go check out all the latest styles, Tommy John 360 line, and they're awesome new colors. Uh, it's easily my favorite underwear. And I've been raving about them. You hear me talking about them. Maybe talking a little bit too much about my too underwear. Much, man. Uh, all right, but listen, I don't want you guys to miss out on this, okay? So I'm going to keep saying it. Use code GOLFICITY. You get 20% off. Uh, and any of you who, who've worn Tommy John, like myself, you know how important that is. It's time to stock up when you get a, a deal that good. You're not going to be disappointed in these, the new 360. And like I said, check out those fun, exciting new colors. So use code GOLFICITY for 20% off at TommyJohn.com. All right, let's get back to our interview with Justin now. Yeah, because I got to imagine, like a lot of us, we 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 we're in the moment. We feel like the other day, Frank, you were like, "Hey, today my driver's just not working." Mm -hmm. But that's not good enough. I feel like. I mean, I feel like you need to see it. Someone needs to be telling you why it's not working and how to go and fix it. Because well, I think there's also something to be learned from the fact that the data doesn't lie. Like it, it's emotionless, right? You said something earlier, which I think was uh was really kind of key, where you were saying that. Um, what we think like we're good or bad at versus what the reality is. So I think when we start to measure, sometimes it might be that we, we just, in our mind, we've talked ourselves out of, we're terrible at this distance, but then when we, maybe we measure it, we're better than we thought or vice versa. You discover like, Hey, I think this is the, like a very comfortable distance for me, but then we find that the dispersion. So how much do you find that the data that a device like the Rapsoda mobile launch monitor is generating weighs into like good decision making when it comes to golf yeah absolutely so i mean i remember playing in pro ams and college ams i would play with somebody and whether it was a bunker shot or 80 yard shot and hit it at 25 feet and it would be that and i'm thinking you're a 20 handicap that's a great shot for your skill level now i understand they can do better than that but golf's all about managing your game expectations so um, for instance, once you take the uh, combine, it gives you your average proximity and your median proximity. So a great way that you can take that to the course is to know, okay, from 80 yards, my average proximity is 20 feet. Okay. So when you get to the course and the pins on the left, which means, uh, let's say it's three yards from the left. So you got nine yards or nine feet to the left there. So you need to be aiming right at that flag to kick to think about what your average shot's going to be. You should not be aiming directly at that flag unless it's the last hole of your match play and you <laughs> make it or something. You know, you need to aim, let's see, what did I say? If your dispersion or your average proximity was 20 feet, you know, there's nine feet left of the flag, you should be aiming. Let's see, I'm getting my math on the spot there, but uh, the center of that would be 10. So, yeah, the foot to the right it wasn't a great example number wise but let's say it's 30 you know then you're right, right 10 feet it. right of the flag and you need to understand that if you aim 10 feet to the right of the flag half the time you're probably going to pull it left 10 feet and it's going to be a great shot and it's going to be you know by accident but you're actually planning for that so that's kind of some of the things you can take from the combines and bring it on the course of just of like where to aim you know what's a good shot um you know if your average proximity is 40 feet from 150 yards you need be aiming for that when you the course so right and that's where we start to see learning like, what your patterns are exactly and that's where we start to see like actual improvement in our handicap and our scores is when we're making like real data driven decisions like we we see right. it it's in front of, even if like sometimes the data like if you're a high handicapper the data can be harder to face because you're like wow look out by my dispersion is but like you said now at least i can work with that i have something because it, the reality is we've all been there we start playing off you're just firing at pins and then you're wondering why you're missing the green left in a bunker uh, why do you think they put that bunker there you know what i mean for that reason to the smarter golfers who know their dispersion are going to be able to play that better. Um, but speaking of the data driven, there's one feature I want you to talk a little bit about because I really like it in the combines, the distances. So we can go in and, and, and select distances. As you said, if it was distances we're good at, and we want to test ourselves or bad at, and we want to see where our benchmark is, but the system also has the ability to identify distances for you. I think that's pretty cool. So I want you to tell us a little bit about how that works. 
Yeah. So when you start a combine, you'll have two options, which is the custom distances, which is what uh, you and Mike did. Uh, and then there's also the recommended distances. Uh, so this is um, developed with uh, Sasha, Dr. Sasha McKenzie, who used over 100,000 uh, tour shots, 20 years of data with all of the students he teaches. Uh, and we really wanted to hone in on you know, how can we make people better and how do we make their practice uh, more efficient. And so when we recommend those distances, we're actually looking to see what shots you have not hit or there's gaps. So if, you know, your seven iron goes 160 and your eight iron goes 147, there might be a gap in there between that seven and eight that you're not practicing. So we'll actually recommend shots that you are not hitting. Um, and over time, once you take more combines, we'll actually recognize your weaknesses and recommend those. So I think again, with practice golf, people like hit, hitting the shots that they're good at, good at uh, comfortable with, which we mm -hmm. all get. Uh, but if you want to improve, you also need to sharpen some of those weaknesses and shots you never hit because you're going to get them on the golf course. And where is it pulling that information from? Is it pulling it from just combines or is it pulling it from other shots that you're hitting on the range with the launch monitor? How's that work? So it's pulling it from the recommended distances are pulling it from all shots you've hit a uh, lifetime on the MLM, just in oh, session. Cool. Uh, and then over time, once you take more combines, we'll actually pick uh, the, the distances you've taken in the combine that are weakest. So, yeah, and that's that. See, that goes back to me. Like I said, that data driven, you're at the more you use it, the more it's creating a, a data bank for you. So like, in, you know, more, much more than just like out on the range and you're just seeing your numbers there. It's actually retaining all that information. Like if I was just going out there and I was just having a range session, I'm not doing a combine, I'm just hitting balls, but I got the mobile launch monitor behind me uh, and I'm, it, I'm just selecting my clubs, telling it what I'm hitting and just hitting balls and just going through my normal work. You're saying it, it's capped, it's capturing all that and doing something with that information. It is. Yeah. Okay. So any, sh if you just don't take, a, or you haven't taken a combine yet, you're already on the MLM. If you've hit hundreds of thousands of shots, we have that in the database and we can recognize, oh, wow, you know, Mike hasn't hit one from 172 before, or that's the, you know, the least populated um, data point for his carry distance. We're going to recommend for Mike to practice. Um, and it's, it's just helping you become more efficient, finding weaknesses, uh, so you can become a better player. Very cool. And one thing we haven't touched on yet is who who is the combine available to? Because one thing I do really like, and I, I love this in general, with you don't get this with any other product other than tech products, that they, they actually get better even after you've bought them. <laughs> so like this was a uh, this was an update. Like this is something that wasn't originally in the uh, Rap Soda Mobile Launch Monitor, but now it is. So. How do people go about using it? Whether they have the device, they if they if they haven't purchased the device yet, I know people are going to be asking that question. Right. So we offer a premium subscription, um, which is ninety nine dollars a year. Uh, Combines is part of that. Um, also, we have a coaching platform. Uh, offers you slow motion. Uh, offers you a couple other data metrics such as Apex. Um, but it's part of our premium subscription package. And as you said, that's what's so exciting about the Rapsodo MLM is we can uh, continue to update the software. And we have a lot of uh, more features in the pipeline that are come out that if you already have in the existing hardware, there's nothing you need to do other than up update the app. Uh, so if you if you don't have a if you have the MLM on, don't have a premium subscription, um, you can sign up. Um, and once you purchase it, you have seven day free. Uh, trial so you can test out combines the other features see what you think uh, if you don't own, own an mlm you can go to our website and bundle the mlm with the subscription uh, and there's 30 dollars off the subscription so uh, and i think you guys got a nice little code for them as well we do we do and we'll link to all that in the show notes for sure because uh to me that the code makes it like just a no-brainer but uh I, I i'm just laughing and thinking i'm guaranteed there's somebody listening to this who has an mlm 
and didn't even know they got combines. <laughs> yeah. You know, it, it's just, it's there now. And that's what I like about these updates. Like you get these new fe- features. Um, yeah. So, so we're really excited about this one. And, and would you say this is definitely a feature for like all levels of golfer? Is there a particular level that it, it, it can get the most benefit for, or should everyone just have this on their radar? Everyone should have it. I mean, for me, I won't, uh, have a range session with my out taking a combine because I think it's that fun, but I'm just getting the feedback of like how I'm actually hit it. Cause as you said, if you're working on performance base, trying to hit a hundred yards, it might not feel good. And trust me for the tour players, it doesn't always feel good, but if you can perform and hit that number you're trying to hit, that's what matters at the end of the day. So I just love that feedback. Um, but I have three kids. I have young kids. I have a five-year-old who I took him out this weekend, and I wanted, you know, showing him a uh, combines feature, and he took three in a row. Because <laughs> to him, it was a pure game, and it was just fun. He's getting his score, and he wants to instantly beat it again. So whether you're, you know, trying to improve or just trying to enjoy the game more, I think it's just, it captures everybody. I mean, I, I, I was going to say, I just got to say so because – First of all, I mean, it's got to be one of the most affordable ones on the market, you know, at the price point that it's at, you know, under $500. The the portability of it, we always talk about it being the size of a rangefinder, clips to your bag. So I'm almost like, I'm going to ask the question, like, us using it, like, how can you go hit some balls and not have, how can you do a range test without numbers anymore? To me, the only reason to do that is if you're like, you're just rushing your tee time, you just need to warm up. But for, you know, I, it's just, it's a softball question. Cause I know like I'm hyping up the product, but I can't not go to a rain session without numbers now. Cause it's so, no, big. I'm the same way. Yeah. Uh, I mean, when I was playing full time, I, I wanted access to that data, but I would have to go to a facility that I track, man. I mean, right. at wake we did, but I didn't have 25 grand to plant down on a track. Right. Man. And if you watch the tour every week, almost all. Every one of those guys has a long monitor out there and they're either looking at the data right at the time or they're collecting it, you know, to review it later. And I would say there's no difference between them and the average golfer that just wants to get better or have fun. Um, and golf's more fun, uh, the, the better you play, uh, I think at least. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, but, uh, yeah, and so that accessibility is what Rap Soto is all about. Um, and we just won the uh, best launch monitor under $500 from Mike Golf Spy, I think, for the third, fourth year in a row. Um, so we're the most accurate device uh, at that price point, but also we're continually adding features uh, that are fun and are going to make you a better player. All right, we'll get you back to Justin. And in fact, I'm going to ask him at the end, like, what was the highest combine score out there? I'm just curious. Like, did anyone like ace it? Because I know we certainly didn't. But so uh, big thanks to FootJoy. You know, bring some heat to your game with the new FootJoy Fuel. Uh, the shoe looks awesome. It delivers that sneaker-like feel. It's packed full of golf-specific innovation for men, women, juniors. It features FootJoy's latest and lightest midsole called the Stratolite. Uh, it delivers incredible comfort while still providing that terrific traction. We know how important traction is, that energy through your swing. We talk about that a lot. And what I love about these shoes, they got a lot of different vibrant colors. So, it, uh, you know, whatever level game you are, it doesn't really matter. Whatever swing type you are, if you're wearing shorts, pants, sweatshirts, hoodies, it doesn't matter. Nine holes, 36 holes. FootJoy Fuel has been engineered to bring heat to your game. So learn more about the FootJoy Fuel at FootJoy.com. And of course, we want to also thank Rap Soto, guys. We're doing a lot of talking about Rap Soto here, so I'm not going to beat it to death. But I will say, if you haven't already checked out Rap Soto, the mobile launch monitor, you're definitely missing out. It is the number one rated personal launch monitor on the market today, and there's a reason for it. Super precise measurements. You hear us talking about it today in today's episode. Using it in your range session can really change things for you. Uh, when you're out there, you start to really practice like the pros practice. And now with the brand new new combine feature it's just made a great product even better it's there to help you make you a better golfer and it's a lot of fun to use you're hearing us talk about it today super portable super affordable 
especially when you use our promo code. So go to rapsoda.com, use promo code GOLFVISITY, MLM. That's going to give you $100 off. They're also bundling it uh, with a $30 off bundle for their premium subscription. Remember, that premium subscription is what's going to get you access to all these great new features. Mm -hmm. Like I said, it's a great product that just keeps getting better as you get this software update. So it's really cool. Um, And remember, GOLFVISITY listeners, you have the opportunity now to get a, a, a total discount, $130 with that bundle and the $100 off. That's Golficity MLM, Rap Soto. Like I said, we're super psyched on it. We've been using the product for a long time. Uh, we love how it's helping our game, and I'm sure you'll love how it helps you as well. So go check them out. For sure. And lastly, I want to thank Precision Pro, the NX10 Rangefinder. We have been now to Whistling Straits with it. We went out to California with it. We're traveling the globe with this thing. We love it. We love how it fires. It's fast. It's quick. It's reliable. It's sturdy. It's under $300. You want a rangefinder that's packed with all of the things that you need to perform, the NX10 is it. But plus, it's the most stylish, most customizable rangefinder out there. In fact, we've got our own sleeve, one of two actually, or one of three, but here's just one I got here. You could just clip this on and you could do this in many different different sleeves or skins that they have on their website. You got to check it out for yourself. Go to precisionprogolf.com and go check out all of the custom plates that come that you can buy now with your new rangefinder. You guys are not going to be dissatisfied with this at all. And they give you a 90-day return policy, which is pretty incredible. Two-year warranty, free shipping, uh, unlimited batteries You know, if you need them. But use that code GOLFICITY at checkout because you're going to get $20 off. It's going to be even cheaper for arguably what I think is one of the best range finders out there. So go swing with confidence, hit more greens. That's Precision Pro Golf. All right, let's get back to Justin. Yeah, we, like I said, we always like a product that after you own it, it keeps getting better. But we, we keep talking about the affordability, but I think that portability is something that I want to hit on too because when you said that, it made me kind of remember – Come some of the um, PGA Tour, and uh, I'm thinking even when we were there at Brookline at the U.S. Open, we were there for some of the practice rounds, and it's getting to the point. And, and I always try to like, try to steal things from the best players. Like if they're doing it, there's a reason they're doing it, and maybe we should do something like that too. It's not even just on the range anymore that I'm seeing these guys use launch monitors. They're using them on their practice rounds. We were following Justin just Thomas him, around. Thomas he was said. using it for every shot. You know, his father was was carrying his foresight, you know, which we're talking about a $30,000 machine, but carrying it around and setting it down next to him for every shot. He's gathering data on every shot. For this, correct me if I'm wrong, I mean, I know because we've done it, we've set it up on tee boxes. It's not necessarily just for the range. If I'm t- if I'm having a practice round, I can bring the rap soda out with me and just same type of thing. Get my data for almost every shot, right? Yeah. No, it fits in your pocket. You can slip in your back pocket. I mean, it's the same size as my iPhone 13 Pro. Um, and I take it on the course all the time. It's fun to have long drives uh, with friends um, or out there. Um, or just capture the data on the course because a lot of times, for me personally, I swing faster on the course than I do in the range. I don't know mm-hmm. why, but it it just happens. So I think it's great too, to get that context of like, what's my driver on the course, what it is on the range and, and kind of get a little insight. Cause as yeah. you say, it's portable, it's easy to set up and it's like, why not have that data? Right. I I'm, I'm just so much. I, I just believe in data because of the fact that, like I said, it doesn't lie. It doesn't have any emotion tied to it. It's, it's just there. And then you, you do what you need once you have that information. But Let's say you were that person, like we were mentioning earlier, who's trying to solve the problem of like, why am I better on the range than I am on the course? Like here, okay, so just take the device on your range session and then take it in one of your practice rounds and see, is there a difference? Are you swinging it differently? Are you launching it differently on the course? Maybe there's something that you're changing. So I think that that's something to provide a lot of insight into. But um, speaking of insight, the other question I wanted to ask you, like I said, I always try to steal things from better golfers so somebody like yourself you've got the rap soto what is one of your practice sessions look like i know you said you're putting a combine in every practice session do you start with a combine see as an assessment and then work on some things after that do you do you have a a method where you're hitting some balls first measuring them and then finish your session with a combine so like let's say you had a a range session planned what would that look like for you yes 
it varies based on how much time I have, but normally I start the first, you know, five minutes, I get loose, hitting some wedges. Um, then I normally have something I want to work on mechanically. So I may work on that for 20 balls or 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and try to get that feeling what it looks like. Uh, may use vis- video and reference the Rapsodo in terms of power. Um, and in certain positions of what the cut's doing. Um, and then I'm getting very focused into, into what I'm trying to do. So I would, I would do a combine right now just because I'm obsessed with it and it's really fun. But otherwise I would just have a session in terms of, you know, I like to play a, a fade. So, um, I would hit, you know, kind of stock, uh, shots with, you know, an eight iron, six iron, four, three foot driver. Um, and just try to hit my normal shot but with a target out there. And then we also have a session insights feature that will give you feedback uh, you know, in terms of sh- uh, shot shape frequency. So for me, I want to see that um, fading. You know, I don't want to see that draw on, on the bar graph. Um, I want to make sure my launch directions are starting like um, that fade. So yeah, there's there's other things in terms of, of uh, launch angle. You know, I want to see tw- between 12 and 15 with the driver, closer to 15 if I'm trying to bomb it. Uh, but I kind of have a more of a uh, fairway finder at 12 degree. So there's definitely metrics I'm looking at uh, to kind of get a sense of, of how I'm doing and what improvements I need to make. And two, it's just nice to see, okay, my body's feeling good today. What's my club head speed? You know, my body's not feeling as well. What's the club head speed? And some days you kind of surprise yourself of, well, I feel very good, but I'm swinging fast. Um, and some days you're swinging faster than you probably should because the, the, the ball strike is not as solid as it needs to be. So again, I always have that out just because even if I'm not like digesting all of the data at the time on the range, you know, I'm looking at some of the metrics. When I get back home, I can kind of fully digest what happened uh, and and see what I need to improve next time. So, um, no, I mean that's that's fantastic. And, and one of the things I keep thinking about um, from a user standpoint is the ability to use this product indoors. And I think that's great. I mean, fifty percent of the country is about to go indoors in a few months. So it's probably one of the most convenient and inexpensive ways to set up a practice session in your garage. You know, you get the MLM, put up a tarp, put up a hitting net, and boom, you've got all the numbers you need. Um, is combines uh, suggested to be outdoors only? Does it work indoors? So combines is an outdoor only feature right now. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, in the future, I th- if we'll have an indoor and outdoor feature. But Great. we really were excited about getting this launch. So it, it is an outdoor only feature, but we do have uh, the ability to hit uh, net sessions and just practice. Yeah, and I know the one thing about Repsoda, you guys are ever changing and, and improving with app updates and things like that. So bravo to that. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, listen, I think it's a very cool stuff. We've been very excited about it since trying it. And, and like I said, what I really wanted to hone in on was using it not just like I said as fun but also as that game improvement um, we've learned a lot about and had a lot of, of of teaching professionals on the show and talk about the the merits of like gamification of your practice uh, and what that can really do you know not only for the mind but also just for showing improvement and, and keeping those practice sessions both having a similar amount of pressure that you'd feel on the golf course, uh, but and, and a similar amount of feel that you'd have on the golf course. So it, it's just it's something that I think is really cool feature, and that's why I really want to hit on it because I do think that there's a disconnect in the way some of you know the golfers who want to play better and some of the top tier golfers really practice. So um, appreciate you you know just taking the time to come on the show, tell us a little bit about Combine, uh, tell us a little bit about you know some of the new features because I think it's very interesting and I think it's going to help a lot of golfers get better. Yeah, no, we're really excited about it. I think you hit on the head there. There's so many people that can't take it from the range to the course. And I ask my buddies, you know, well, when you're at the range, where are you aiming? A lot of times they're like, well, I'm just trying to hit straight. <laughs> so I think with the combines, it's really, okay, this is the target we're trying to hit at. This is the distance we're trying to hit at. Let's put a little pressure and see how you do. And I think the more you get comfortable with that actual range practice is more, of course, the better you're going to get. Couldn't yeah, agree that's, with you that's awesome. And Justin, before we let you go, I got to ask you, you know, you got all the data. What was the highest combine score you've seen on the back end come in out of 100? So we're going to be, be posting that um, oh, okay. every month uh, 
we're going to wait till October. So once we got a month of data, but each uh, each month, whoever has the highest uh, combine score is going to get feast their own social, uh, which will be a, cool. you know a fun little contest. Um, I think the highest score so far is is uh, is myself, which is <laughs> awkward. Uh, I think I got a ninety one point something. Wow, um, it's it's a tough it's a tough scale. Um, yeah. So anything, and I think I forget the you know exact relation, but seventies is around a scratch. So um, yeah. So like that nineties number. I've taken a lot of combines though. Yeah. That like that we're talking tour level when you're in the nineties level, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Tour level good. accuracy. Yeah. yeah that's, 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 <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> well, we know that if if we ever play together, you're gonna have to give us a whole bunch of strokes. Yeah. <laughs> that 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 of anything else, but very cool. So hey, hey we'll keep an it. eye. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. We'll keep an eye too on the Rapsoda socials, and we'll link to those in the show notes so that as the the combines are rolling out people can see what some of those scores are that are coming in but i i think those are always cool to see but i think there's nothing better as an individual golfer than having that benchmark shoot whatever your score is it could be 20 you know on the lower end whatever it is now you have a benchmark you've got a quantifiable number you can see if you're getting better you can see if the lessons you're taking the youtube videos you're watching the grind you're doing on the range whatever it is you now can measure and say that I'm moving in the right direction. Or if you're not, you can kind of right the ship. So I love the fact of it being a benchmark. Um, I think it's a really cool new feature, and I appreciate you uh, coming on the show to tell us about it today. Yeah, guys. Thanks for having me. Uh, really appreciate it. Love what you guys are doing, um, educating everybody and just providing entertaining content. It's been really fun to watch you guys grow and looking forward to what's, a, what's next. Appreciate that, Justin. Same thank here. you. All right, Justin, thank you again. And uh, let's see that 100 number. You're going to be the guy to do it. <laughs> we'll be watching. <laughs> Keep those combines rolling. All right, I'm we'll talk try. to you soon. All right. All right, guys. Take care, nice. Justin. All right. So like I said, always trying to learn something, especially when we talk to better golfers. And I just think, again, I'm going to keep saying this. I think the technology is there. It's becoming more affordable. It's becoming more portable and it's becoming something that a lot more golfers can leverage. Um, so get out there, practice like the pros do train like the pros do. If you haven't already given a look to the Repsoda mobile launch monitor, do yourself a favor and take a look at it. Like I said, use code golf is the MLM. We got a great discount. Uh, you know, maybe who, who knows? Like, the holiday season, it's going to be, it's not too far okay. off. Maybe you get yourself a nice little early present. Stuff your own stocking. Stuff your own stocking <laughs> this year. But special thanks to Justin for taking the time to come on the show today. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. Make sure you subscribe wherever you get your podcasts, and we'll see you again next week. <laughs>